Good evening. It's nice to see all of you this evening. And we also want to extend a warm welcome to everyone who has joined us online and who has been with us through this worship time and through this service. Let us pray. Father, this evening we want to thank you. We want to thank you for every opportunity that we have to share your word, to hear your word, to be instructed by your word, and to receive guidance for our day-to-day -day living, Lord. Father, I pray this evening, Lord, even as the word that have been laid upon my heart, Lord, will be like a shining star that shone on that Christmas night, Lord. That, Lord, that will draw us unto the place where Jesus was born and give us understanding of the birth of Jesus Christ, Lord, so that we, like the shepherds, would go and witness that awesome miracle that you did on that day. Father, this evening I pray that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In Jesus' name I pray. Countdown has started and we are just 12 days away from Christmas. So if I'm to ask you, what is the most exciting thing for you at Christmas? What will you tell? Because Christmas is something that the whole world celebrates. It's not only Christians, it's not only believers, but even non-believers are very excited with the season of Christmas. So what excites you most in the season of Christmas? Revan, what excites you most? Food. Revan says food. Nalin, what excites you most? I think with all the masks, I think everybody is finding it difficult to answer. So there are many things that excites us because sometimes during the season of Christmas, houses are painted, houses are refreshed, decorations are put up, Christmas trees are done, and a lot of people like to do decorative work in the house. There are some people who like to start baking cakes, Christmas cake, love cake. There are many things that they would like to bake goodies. But there is one thing that everyone longs for in Christmas. And that one thing everyone longs for is a gift. And it's a season to receive a gift. And it is a season to give a gift. So we all get excited because Christmas is a time that we can expect a gift. If you're a child from your father or from your grandfather or for someone who is near and dear to you. So I have titled my message this evening, The Awesome Gift of Christmas because that was the greatest gift that we mankind ever received. The gift, the gift God the Father chose to give mankind. It has been said in the season of Christmas, anticipation exceeds realization. Certainly when it comes to Christmas gifts, we all have experienced that one time or the other. We often laugh when boring gifts like socks or vests are given in this time of the year. I can remember as children sometimes you get socks and vests and that is so boring. But there comes moments, there is a gift that is given and that brings us joy because it meets every desire of our heart and the very thing that we were longing for. That joy comes to us unexpectedly. Beloved, as we read through the story of the birth of Jesus recorded in Luke 2, verses 1 to 20. My endeavor this evening is to uh, take you to and make three observations concerning this gift of God which was given to us on the first day of Christmas. Today as there is so much of uncertainty around us and the future is hard even to predict and in the environment that people are looking for joy, hope and peace. That is exactly what Christmas is all about. That's the Christmas message. Because on that day, there was joy. There was hope that was brought to mankind. And there was peace that was given unto all men. So let's read with me the first scripture for this evening. Luke 2, verses 1 to 7. Shall we read together? And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place while Quinrius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, 
to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The first observation that I want to place before you is, the gift of God is miraculous. Throughout the Old Testament, we read prophecy after prophecy concerning the coming of the Messiah. When one ponders the miraculous circumstances of the conception and the birth of Jesus, we just have to shake our heads in wonder and in amazement. Mary was a virgin, yet she was with child. Luke 1, 30 to 33 records. Mary and Joseph were some 80 miles away. This is stated in Luke 1, 26. From the birthplace of the Messiah and the time for Mary to give birth was fast approaching. For us, 80 miles is nothing, even if your wife is pregnant and needs delivery. However, in the days when this was happening, an 80-mile trek with a woman who was close to giving birth was another story. Augustus Caesar was ruling, but God was in charge. For God used Caesar's edict to move Mary and Joseph 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem to fulfill his word. Beloved, a virgin birth doesn't happen without a miracle. Joseph, the man she was, what we could call engaged to, had every right to have her pay the price for getting pregnant out of wedlock. Joseph would have to deal with the shame of his wife to be already pregnant. And Joseph not having Mary stoned and accepting her story was also a miracle. That was helped by the angels appearing to Joseph, which is recorded in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. Put yourself in Joseph's position. Just imagine yourself in Joseph's position. Your fiancé, with whom you have not stepped out of line, becomes pregnant. Then she comes and tells she is still pure, and she was impregnated by God. Just imagine what Joseph would have felt at that moment. A miraculous conception, a miraculous pregnancy, a miraculous acceptance by Joseph, and a miraculous decree from Caesar Augustus that moved Joseph and Mary to be at the right place at the right time. And a miraculous birth was made in the stable. What's amazing concerning the gift of God, beloved, is that it defies human logic and they are miraculous in nature. So every time we sometimes receive a gift of God, it defies human logic because it is always miraculous in nature. Beloved, logic may tell you that the future is bleak, but the gift of God this Christmas is miraculous and will give you a new beginning of hope, joy, and peace, just the same way it gave the people who received that miracle that day. And I think we all need that because we do not know what tomorrow is. But God has a way for every situation. Today, you may be waiting on a need in your life, and you know God has given you a promise, but you do not see how possible or how it will happen because you don't see any indication of it. You may feel that you are miles away from the promise, but be encouraged, beloved, that God can move the heart of the rulers of the world to bring you to the place for the promise to give birth in your life. When I say heart of the rulers is for your promise to come, there may be certain things that needs to come into place, certain decisions by made by people that is in higher echelons, but God will make it happen and bring you to a place where you can receive that promise. When it seems there is no hope, when the circumstances appear to be insurmountable, God can move mountains. When you receive God's gift, 
in Jesus Christ, you will always receive a miracle, beloved. The second observation I want to place before you from the gift of God this Christmas is the gift of God inspire a sense of awe in you. Come with me to Luke 2, verses 8 and 9. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. When the angel finished the announcement to the shepherds, the scene became even more awe-inspiring. Just imagine that night, that in, in the blackness of that night, all what was happening before the shepherds. Let's read Luke 2, verses 10 to 14. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and, earth, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. A multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel began praising God, beloved. This announcement was so wonderful that God sent the whole band down from heaven to praise the Lord that night. It was such a wonderful announcement that was made that day. Beloved, the gift of God inspires a sense of awe, and it did inspire a sense of awe in all the shepherds who heard, him, heard, the, uh, heard the praises that night. This scene had to be the scene of the ages. This scene was so awe-inspiring that the shepherds made a decision. They did not just listen to it. They heard it and they made a decision, which is recorded in Luke 2, verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Beloved, there will be times that God reveals things to us, but then we have to make a decision to go and see what the Lord has revealed or go and experience what the Lord is telling you and me. The shepherds were so moved by the experience, they had to check it out, beloved. Beloved, the gift of God inspire a sense of awe and move us to new heights. And that's what happened that night to the shepherds. They were moved into a new height from what they were about to see and about to experience. When we receive the gift of eternal life from God through Jesus, we will never be the same because we receive El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one in Jesus Christ, who is sufficient for every need of our life, beloved. It's not like the gift we receive at Christmas in the natural because that gift will be for one purpose and for a particular season. But the gift of Jesus Christ, if you and I receive in Christmas and appropriate it into our life, it will meet every need in every facet of our life because that's what the gift of God means. I would imagine that these shepherds were never the same after what happened on that blessed evening. The presence of God should move us and inspire us to be different. And that's what inspired the shepherds. They became different people that night. So this Christmas, may the gift of God in Jesus inspire you with a sense of awe and move you to new heights the Lord has for you, beloved. And the third observation out of the story of Christmas I want to place before you. The gift of God is meant to be shared. A couple of days ago, I saw a friend of mine had posted on uh, FB that her husband had given uh, her the newest Apple 12 phone, and she was saying, this is what I got for Christmas. She was sharing the joy, and this may be an indication for some husbands that you might be able to give your wife an Apple 12 phone. But what I'm trying to imply is, when you get an awesome gift, you want to share the joy of that gift. Isn't it? That's what, that's what happened with that post. When you receive a great gift, what do you do with it? You share it with others in the sense that you show them, 
you joyfully tell them about the gift and by doing this you are sharing the joy of the gift come with me to Luke 2 verses 16 to 20 and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger now when they had seen him they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart then the shepherds returned glorify and praising God for the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them just think for a moment because sometimes we don't we don't catch the whole story Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and that day she was told that it is it is the Son of God that will be born through her the Messiah that the Jews were waiting for she was elated and then Mary and Joseph had to go through a lot of hardship because she conceived out of wedlock and it would have taken a lot of con convincing the people around and for them to go through that time of pregnancy and when the pregnancy came they were taken 80 miles into the place where the Word of God said the Messiah would come from through a decree given by Caesar and on that day when they when when Mary was about to deliver Joseph went into the inn was looking for a room and never found a room what would have Joseph's thought be God who has done so much for us why is it there is no room they did not have a room and they ended up in a stable and in that stable the child was born and the Mary and Joseph would have been wondering why on earth was this child born in the stable because God could have done anything God could have given a room with God nothing is impossible but God didn't and when the shepherds came and shared what the angel told them the Word of God said Mary hid everything in her heart that's the moment Joseph and Mary knew what the Lord had completed in their lives with the birth of Jesus up until then they may have had questions but that night when the shepherds came and shared what the good news the announcement the Word of God says that widely known saying which was told to them, all those who heard it marveled at those which was told by the shepherds why did they marvel they suddenly understood what God was doing in their midst when the shepherds shared the gift of God they received all who heard it were amazed and Mary treasured what was said in her heart gift of God is meant to be shared because it is life-changing beloved when we share the gift of God it changes the life of somebody else as much as it changes our life as we accept that gift verse 20 says the shepherds returned praising God for the, for all they had seen and have been told when you receive God's gift how could you not share the gift we are living in a world that has gone pear-shaped and is a complete mess people need some hope people need some joy people need some peace and all these things can be found in Jesus God's awesome gift to mankind beloved it is only we who have received the gift seen and experienced the gift and it's wonder that can share with others who lost who are lost without any hope today so let us like the shepherd share this gift which is the saying concerning the birth of Jesus widely known to our friends family and to the people we associate with that's our calling we are to be the shepherds out into the world that is lost so let us share it the saying concerning the birth of Jesus beloved in these difficult days we need to keep our eyes open to the unexpected ways that joy arrives in our lives because God delights in surprising us God would have surprised Mary and Joseph when they heard the words that the shepherds spoke that night and the shepherds after a long day's work out there on the field that night they were resting some would have been sleeping they would have been tired and it was a dark night and in that dark night suddenly there was an announcement because the glory of the Lord came and shone around them 
God surprised them. So God sometimes in our life surprises us the way God speaks to us and the way God interacts with us, beloved. So we need to have an expectant heart and know that God will always do things out of the logic of the human mind because God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That night, in that dark night, when everything was dark, there was this bright light that came and the, and the message came that the Son of God has been born, a Savior unto you. Friends, in the times we are living, we can be so blinded by what is circling around us, like lockdowns, uh, retrenchments, uh, economies crashing, so many things that are happening around us and we can get blinded from the most important things in life, beloved. So let me share with you a story of the importance of not losing the sight of the greatest gift given to mankind. As I told you, this is a time of giving and sharing gifts. And when we want to get a good gift, we would tell if it's, I'm sure Nalin, you would have told your dad what you want for Christmas. Is the latest Canon camera or it can be something because there is a desire for you to say because the story is like this there was this 17 year old young man who was expecting to get a car for Christmas from his wealthy grandfather he had a wealthy grandfather and he was expecting to get a car from his grandfather Nathan you can ask for a car from your grandfather because he is also very wealthy all heavens wealth is with him so this is how this uh, son wanted his grandson was looking forward for this car. And on that appointed day, the grandfather handed the teenager a box. The boy too opened the box to find a leather Bible inside. And his grandfather asked, do you like it? Nathan, just like your grandfather, no? he would have given you a Bible. Do you like it? And this little boy said, yes, yes, I like it. But in his face, it said all that he was disappointed. The grandfather told him to be sure to read the Christmas story when he got a chance. And the lad said he would. Actually, however, he went home that day and tossed the Bible inside a drawer and never opened it. A few months went by and the grandfather died. And the few, at the funeral, a friend of the family asked the young man if he had gotten his new car. The lad replied that he had not received a car for Christmas. He told the man that, he, that all he got from his grandfather was a Bible. The friend said, my dear boy, go home and read the Christmas story. It's in Luke chapter 2. Go and read it and see what you would find there. So the boy went home excitedly and he took the Bible out of his drawer and he turned to Luke chapter 2 to read the story of Christmas. And as he opened the chapter, he found a letter from his grandfather in that Bible and that chapter. And he quickly tore open the letter to see there was a key to a brand new car. There was a key and he got so excited, but then he went on reading the letter. And in that letter, the grandfather says this. The car I have purchased for you is being held by the dealer for 90 days. You must pick it up by that time or you will lose the car. The boy quickly looked at the calendar and he threw his hands over his face because he had missed the opportunity for the car by just three days. He had lost a great gift. Just like the grandfather in this story, our heavenly father had the perfect motive that gave us the perfect gift of his son Jesus that first Christmas. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I wonder, just like that boy, how many have lost life's greatest gift by putting off the opening of their hearts to receive Jesus, God's Son. Don't wait too long, my friend. Losing a car is one thing. But losing your soul is another. Some have decided to wait for a more convenient time to settle things with God. Sure, they intend to look into this matter about Jesus one day in the future. But then the life slips away and the gift is left 
unopened. Death comes too quickly and the gift is unopened. Even as I was preparing and meditating on this message, my thoughts were taken back to a day just after Christmas, 26th of December 2004, when the devastating tsunami hit many a nation around, uh, around Southeast Asia. And in a moment, many lives were taken away. And I wonder how many celebrated the Christmas on 25th of December, but had never opened that gift of Christ into their hearts on the 26th when they were taken away. Today, COVID-19 is rampaging across the world and we see deaths increasing day by day. And I wonder how many of them have celebrated Christmas but not opened the gift that was given to them and the gift remains unopened. You see, there is no guarantee of life another day, even another hour. Sadly, when it comes to God's unsearchable gift, that's what many are doing. They have left the greatest of all gifts, the gifts of God love, wrapped up into his son, Jesus Christ, unopened. The gift was the best heaven had to offer, and he came to redeem us from our sins and to give us eternal life. For this gift to be effective, beloved, one must receive it. This re gift requires some action on the part of the recipient. Romans 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Beloved, so you must turn away from your sin, believe on him as the Lord and Savior, and follow him, or the gift will be left unopened. Have you ever received a gift card and put it aside saying that I will use it on another day? And when you suddenly find it in your drawer, it has expired? It has happened to me. I'm sure it would have happened to you at some point of your life. We receive a gift card or a gift voucher and we put it aside and suddenly when we find it, it has expired. There is no use in it. Some gifts have a time limit, just like the one we read in that story. But the good news today, beloved, is Christmas gift card is still valid. The gift is still available for you and for me. But we know time is running out. We know from what is happening on the world that we never know when the expiry date would come. And by then, we may have lost the gift if we have not opened it. The gifts we receive in the world have a season of interest and then fades into memory. But the great thing about the gift of Jesus is that it lasts forever and it is useful for every facet of your life. Beloved, it took me 32 years to understand what it meant by opening that gift that God gave on Christmas Day. For 32 years, out of which I would say 25 years where I would have I could have thought and made decisions with. I celebrated Christmas after Christmas because I was born into a Catholic family, uh, uh, studied in a Catholic school. I was a Christian by name, but I never understood all those 25 Christmases from five years to 27 Christmases from five years to 32 years, the value of the gift of Jesus. The true understanding what it means to open my heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Opening the gift means I was required to open my heart and give the Lord permission to rule my day, to rule my night, and to rule my life. And when I did that, my life completely changed. But it took a long time and I would encourage you, you could be in any denomination, but in whatever denomination you are in, if you don't open your heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, the gift will remain unopened, beloved. And when I opened that gift 20, uh, uh, 32 years ago, that gift, 25 years ago actually, that gift, when I was 32, that gift has never lost its value on me. The gift is miraculous, I said. I have experienced the miraculous in my life. 
I have been taken through a bomb blast and God has secured and protected me. I have been taken through a heart attack. The God has healed me and restored me. I have been positioned in a place which I could not even expect to receive some big, big promotions which I have never even thought in my life would ever come. God had done that things. The miraculous, the awe I have experienced since the day I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. That's what God has done in not only to me, it has done to my family, our children, because God has given them things that they never thought that they will have, even in school or in university. But the greatest gift God gave was the salvation where we were all saved and we were given that salvation. And the promise of when we are saved, our household will be saved, I experienced in my life because my father and my mother both came to salvation, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ because before they were taken up to be with the Lord. That's the miraculous, beloved. It's not that, that we are born a Christian or we are born something to, that we know God. It is a, 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 a decision to ask Jesus to come into our hearts. It is a decision that you and I will never regret. Just imagine if Joseph, he could have been caught up with the fact that his wife-to-be was already pregnant, that he could have missed the joy before. Because it would have been... It would have been such a difficult time for him. But there was a joy before him. Imagine Mary, she could have so been so upset and distraught over take, having to talk to Joseph along with facing the social shame. She would endure because the situation that God has placed her, that she could have missed the joy set before her. Beloved, are you feeling trapped and asking why has God permitted what you are presently going through in your life. We go through in difficult situations in my, our lives, situations that you and I may not understand. But if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ to be the ruler of your life, God will always bring through a great victory in whatever struggle that you have. You may be caught up with a situation that's hard to believe because all what you did was right, but you were found to be wrong and you are paying for injustice that has happened in your life whatever it may be beloved be encouraged do not be discouraged for the spirit of the lord is echoing the words spoken to the shepherds that first christmas to you today do not be afraid for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people for there is born to you this day in the city of david a savior who is Christ the Lord. As I come to a close, can I ask the worship team to come up on stage? Because in a moment, I would be closing down. Christmas is all about the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus. The gift of salvation offered to us through Jesus. You heard when Brother Lalit prayed earlier, Jesus' journey that he came from heaven to a stable, from the, from the stable to a cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave he rose again so that you and I may have life. The miraculous, awesome gift of Jesus is what Christmas is all about. The requirement is for you to accept and open it. And if you do, the reward is everlasting life. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I'm sure every one of us long for a life of abundance. Let me assure you, beloved, that once you choose to accept and open the greatest gift God gives to mankind, the miraculous will be seen in your life which will bring awe to you and awe to everyone associating you. Because they will see the goodness of God in you. They will see the great promise of God manifesting in your life. And they will want to know what's the secret of your life's success. Jesus came into the world as the ultimate Shekinah, the ultimate dwelling of God among men. 
We talk about the star that led the shepherds. We talk about the star that led the wise men. I believe the star was the Shekinah glory of God that shone like a star and that led those people into the place that they had to go. And I believe this evening, even as you are willing to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be a star that the Lord will release. The Shekinah glory of God will come and lead you every day, every week, every month to the place that God wants to take you to. This is why scripture said he would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So the gift you are accepting is not something, a gift that is empty. You are accepting something that God comes and dwells inside of you. No wonder multitude of angels announced his birth and worshipped God. Such a marvel on earth, had never be, earth has never been seen or known. No spectacle of creation or human invention could compare to the miracle that God had wrapped himself in human flesh and made his home among us that's what the miracle is jesus will live in your heart and in my heart that's what the gift is it's a gift that comes alive it's a gift that gives life and it's a gift that will beat our heart every day john 1 14 says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and that's what Christmas is all about, beloved. When we celebrate Christmas, we are lit literally celebrating the fact that God came to live amongst us. Are you today opening your heart? Are you today opening your home? Are you today opening your life and saying, Lord Jesus, come and live with us every day of our life? So will you open your heart and invite the Lord Jesus to dwell in you, to be the ruler of your day, to be the ruler of your night, and to be the ruler of your life. Beloved, you can have the greatest Christmas of your life by accepting Jesus Christ as your savior this very day. I would encourage you who have not made that decision to go that far, today, don't let the gift unopened. For anyone listening on, on, online, if you have celebrated Christmas and never understood what the gift of Jesus means, today, open your heart and receive Jesus into your life. Because when you do that, your life will never be the same. The miraculous will start working in you and there will be a awe and a wonder for many to see in your life as you progress. What an amazing thought, Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ, the everlasting Lord, late in time, behold him come. Offspring of a virgin womb, veiled in flesh the God at sea. Hail the incarnate deity, pleased as man with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. Hark the herald, angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Shall we rise to our feet and let us sing this anthem of a song. Hark the herald, angels sing and sing glory to the newborn king. And after the song, I will ask Brother Lalit to come and open the altar in prayer and you could expect your miracle. And when you accept your miracle, you would be rest assured that there will be awe and wonder that will accompany your life. Let's rise to our feet and sing this beautiful song that talks about, all about Christmas. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Let the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and Savior is reconciled.
preacher pastor prashant uh, he demonstrated how precious that gift was for him man well god with us let's take him in for a moment that he making sure before we go that he is in your heart man has always tried to reach to god here is god coming to man you don't find a president coming to your home isn't it you have to make an appointment and try hard big people don't come to our home but the biggest one came visiting us shall we say thank you that is emmanuel the hebrew imam means he is here he came he is near every time when we wanted something from god as we understood god those days we had to take a gift to bridge the gap correct we took a sacrifice we took offering we went to a far away place different places prescribe different procedures and rituals here he comes with all we want he comes this has not happened in human history ever he came with all what we needed shall we say one more time thank you thank you he came with all we needed thank you thank you we thank you We have a small story in the Bible. The son left home, took everything that the father had kept him for his future, busted it in no time. And he fell in hard ways, bad ways. And by the time he th- thought of coming back to the father's house, he was, he had hardly any clothes left. He looked wretched, miserable. But he said, I'll go home. I have nothing to give my father. I have wasted everything I had. He, he said, he practices in his heart. He said, I'll go to my father and say, I have no training. I have wasted everything. I left your house. I left my education. I didn't complete it. But please, give me a servant's job. He came home. But the father saw him far away. And father ran to him and gave his best robe that father was wearing and covered him and said son all i have is still yours that's god he wasted everything but the father said all i have is still yours shall we say come into my heart lord jesus there is room in my heart for you there is room in my heart for you thank you thank you thank you thank you can we sing amazing how can it make sure today he is emmanuel to each of us each of us all what we lost he brings to us today
safe distance, but come forward to the altar, and I'll ask Dr. Jahan to lead us in worship. It's a day that our Pastor Shan stirred our hearts so much about the gift he received, and about the gift we all can receive. What a precious gift. It's a gift that keeps adding value as it gets older. It's like Christmas cake. As time goes on, it becomes sweeter. Just take a step forward and some of you can come to the front just to receive this gift of Christ. Make sure he's your Emmanuel. Make sure that he is my personal son of righteousness, that his healing wings are over us. He, that he is personally my Prince of Peace. Not only how, how he sang, it's a wonderful song, wonderful hymn. Uh, it's personally ours, personally ours. Yes, Jahan, will you come and please? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful Lord message we heard about your gift Lord and I pray Lord Jesus that you will help us Lord this Christmas we want to receive the greatest gift that you gave us Father and Lord we thank you because this gift is the doorway for us to receive all the other gifts Lord and Heavenly Father as we open our hearts to receive you I pray that you will give to us the other gifts that we need for our sustenance, for us to go forward as well. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. Father, we just open our hearts to you, Lord. And Lord, may the blessing of God be upon us, Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, this night, we open our hearts to you. And we want you to come, Lord, and be the king and the ruler of our lives, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we thank you. We humbly open and unwrap the gift that you have given us, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we remember the days that when we were children, we unwrapped the gifts with gladness. 
Oh Lord, we just unwrap the gift of Christ with gladness today. And Lord, receive you into our hearts, Lord. And thank you, Father, because all the other things that we need for life are given in this gift, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we bless your name and we worship you, Lord. Father, we want to believe you for a great thing this night, Lord. And to all those who are joining us online, I want you to ask God for the greatest gift that you will ever need in life. As we open our hearts for, to Christ, Lord, I pray that you will fill us with the goodness of God, with the blessing of God. Father, as we remember Christmas, we remember how much you gave, and we are deeply indebted to you, Lord. Father, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.